This is my sweet Arcade Legends game console system. And the PC that you see on the ground has lost its hard drive. So I'm going to show you how to replace that with a modern SSD so that your system has all the games it used to have and none of the failure rate of an old IDE hard drive. Here's what the guts of the machine look like without the PC installed. There's the old CRT CGA monitor, um, the PCB boards and controller for the game system. And then down low, you've got the power cable, ground cable, PS2 mouse controller, USB, um, the VGA connector, and the speaker cable that all plug right into the back of the Pentium PC and make the whole system work. Tucked down in the bottom there, I've got the original CD, the manual, and even a keyboard which has a PS2 interface, that old thing. Because if you want to test the PC and reset the CMOS or anything like that, you need a PS2 keyboard, which are kind of hard to find. Since I'm not using it for anything else, I just keep it tucked away in the bottom of the cabinet for when it's needed. And then on the side, you'll see that piece of nylon webbing. Well, that's what I use to secure the PC into the plywood decking because I don't want it to shake around when I move the cabinet from room to room. You can see the box that goes inside this is just a standard PC. All the regular connections and then there's a Molex connector that comes from the inside and hangs out so that it can plug into the PCB of the Arcade Legends box. The PC that runs the game system had an IDE hard drive like this with the old style interface not SATA. The drive died just because of wear and tear. This is like a 1993 PC with an old Intel Pentium in it. So it doesn't even have SATA interface. I found a guy on eBay who sold me this SSD with a Molex power connector attached to it and an IDE plug that matches the pins on this drive. So now I just take this IDE plug and pop it into the machine where the IDE cable from the hard drive originally went. It just snaps on right there, uses the same Molex power connector that the IDE, sorry, bad focus, that the IDE drive had, and then it's going to have 263 80s games back to its original condition. So the old IDE hard drive and ribbon are gone. Now the new SSD drive is in place, plugged right into the IDE connector, and tap and power right off its original Molex connector. So let's go plug it back in and see what happens. The connections are really straightforward. There's a regular wall power supply. There's a PS2 mouse connection that goes to the purple connector, not the green. There's a USB that helps with the trackball that is part of the game system. There's a VGA connection that goes to the CRT monitor. There's a speaker plug, which goes to green, I can't remember. And then there's a Molex connector that plugs into this board and provides power to it right here. Just like that. So everything's connected. Once I test it and everything works, I'll put this nylon strap over the top to secure it so it can't jump out. Okay, it's got external wall power. Let's flip it on and hope for the best together. Power switch. It always does that because the CGA monitor is trying to find the VGA information. And that is not what we hoped for. I replaced the CMOS battery while I was inside the PC Losing power is one of the main reasons that these systems fail after a few years. And this is what I get. And I think it's because the VGA output from the PC is being piped to a CGA monitor. So I'm going to go in and change the CMOS setting and hopefully that'll fix it. So in order to be able to see the computer's display on a regular VGA monitor so that I can edit the CMOS, I'm disconnecting the PS2 keyboard and disconnecting the VGA link that goes to the arcade system and replacing it with a standard VGA monitor. And of course, with that ancient PS2 keyboard that has no other value except this. 
Now I've got the keyboard hooked up and the monitor hooked up and I hopefully can boot the machine and see what it sees in VGA. So let's see what happens. <sighs> Clearly the software works just great and there's all the games that I would like to have displayed on my CGA monitor, but it's not working yet. So I need to go back in the BIOS and make a change. So to fix this, I started the computer and hit the delete key to get into CMOS. I'm gonna to go to peripheral setup and I've gotta go down and turn off the parallel port. Page up to disable it, hit escape. And now as soon as I, before I leave this, I wanna make sure that I turn off my floppy drive too because it tries to boot to floppy every time it comes up. So I'm gonna get rid of that, escape. Save it all. And then when it boots up, it ought to go to a CGA resolution display instead of the full VGA that I had on the screen a minute ago. I skipped that floppy boot, which is nice. And now you can see that Ultracade screen is not as good as the one I had before because it's CGA. So let's plug it in to the arcade system and see what happens. I just swapped the VGA and PS2 mouse cables right back into place. I'm gonna turn the power on down below. Let's see what happens. That's the CGA version of the AMI BIOS screen. Ultracade. Correct resolution and 200 plus games. All right, I hope that helps. This is a pretty eclectic video for a very few people who need it. But if you are able to get your system back online because of this, I think that's fantastic. And if you need to get an SSD drive like the one I showed you putting in, leave me a comment and I will ask the guy who sold it to me if he can do the same for you. Thanks a lot.